Uh, before I get to the point glasses, let me show you two more. The La Chouf, which you might have seen in many reviews. It's the tulip glass I use. I think it's perfectly sized and perfectly shaped because it's not too big, not too small. The stem is just of, of, of perfect length. It's good. I got this here in Montreal for about like $15 together with two huge bottles of La Chouf and Chouf. Um, the Chimay Trappist class. Don't really have to tell you much about it. I, got this, uh, I still have to review the blue one, which is coming probably in the next few days, I believe. And then finally, this row is all tulip shaped pine glasses and then two nonics. The first one is the Kilkenny, which is the first glass I got in Montreal. So I've started this whole collection, being, you know, started me and uh, made me serious about it. Uh, this isn't a full imperial, you know, uh, pint, but this holds about about the same size as an American tumbler, I guess. Um, it's good for your nitrogen charged cans like, you know, Kilkenny, Guinness, Boddington, so forth. Um, I got this for free actually, it was a promotion with a full pack. This is the proper tulip shape Imperial Pint, Samuel Smith, probably know this. Um, actually, you know, some people consider these glasses only for stouts, that's just bollocks, it's not true. These are good for mini, you know, this is a staple kind of shape. Maybe it's, you know, it's this sort of nuances about it. Like the Newcastle Brown Ale glass, which is also the same size, it's slightly oddly shaped. It's, you know, it's rougher. But overall, these together with the Nonix are staple size and, you know, shape in pretty much in the UK and in some parts of Europe. Like, I've seen those in France, especially in the Nonix. So don't think these are only for stouts, they're not. You can use them for any ale pretty much. Even for lagers, they use for lagers, and lagers are drunk in pubs, sadly, in large quantities in, in England. This is Saint Ambroise, um, one of the first pine glasses I got. It's nice and I had to pay quite a bit for it, but it's really worth. It's my favorite, one of my favorite glasses, I guess. And then the last one is the Granite Brewery, same, same, same thing, pretty much, with a different logo on it. Um, my friend got this for me in Toronto the night before my birthday, and then I broke it the same night when I was trying to pack it. So. Um, he gave me another one when he came here yeah, just a week later. So, that's about it. Um, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was interesting and not too long. It's pretty long, but um, I just wanted to mention a few things about the glasses. Um, now, I'm going to challenge some people now, and just before I do that, this is an amazing beer. I believe it's my third or fourth time having uh, Dogfish Head 60 Minute, but I've had other beers from them. Really cool brewery. If you haven't had any beer from them, but you can get access to it, uh, I suggest you do it as soon as possible. They're amazing. Really appreciate um, what Sam Kelgioni, the master brewer, does it does for the brewery and for the whole craft beer industry. It's just amazing. This beer, being the flagship beer, is very hoppy for 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 standard IPA, but it's got enough things to keep you interested. If even if you're not there just for the hops, you know, it's really enjoyable doesn't dry out too much, you know, it's not too bitter, the sweetness is balanced, everything's just perfect. Uh, anyway, um, first of all I'm going to challenge uh, Master of Hobbits. Um, I really enjoy your reviews uh, and um, I want to see your glasses, you, you've, you've, you've shown us some really cool glasses like the, you know, the Belgian um, tulips and everything you've got. Um, I just want to see the whole entire collection if possible. I'm um, also going to challenge uh, Jay from Jay's Beer Review. I don't reckon you've done a video um, about your big glasses. Um, also, I'm not going to challenge Chad 9976 or Barry Souls because they've done a review recently. I mean, sorry, they've done a video blog about those things. And I believe that wasn't the first time for both of them. Um, I want to see uh, other people show their glassware. Patrick the Beer Guy. Uh, check him out if you haven't. He's a Canadian beer reviewer from Calgary. Um, also, um, Hog from Hoggy's Beer Reviews, his name is Hog4305. Uh, uh, really, in, you know, down to earth and just a cool guy. He knows his beer, that's, that's for sure. And he's not afraid to, you know, um, do those swelling and uh, chugging beer reviews. Um, also, Mark from the video beer reviews, for sure. Uh, the Imaso fads, um, if possible, Mark from the Grand Old Hoppery, if possible. I don't know if, um, if you have time for that, but um, and uh, waistcoat 
peer reviews from the UK. Um, boy, am I forget anyone? If I've forgotten your name, you're more than welcome to make a reply to this video. It's, it's always fun to share those things. Um, so yeah, that does it for this part of the vlog, I guess, for the major part. Um, now I'm going to enjoy the rest of this beer and then I'll show you my um, aging beers. Cheers. Alright, so these are the beers I'm currently aging here in my kitchen cupboard, the dark, dark place. Uh, the first one is an Austrian beer, it's the Jürbach 23 Degrees. I haven't actually tried this beer yet, so I'm not really, I don't really have any, uh, you know, frame of reference to compare this to a fresh one, but other than that, I just didn't have time to drink it, so uh, it's a 2008 release, so I'll be probably reading that someday. Maybe sometime this season or something. Um, then another one, you've probably seen this one before, I've reviewed it. It's the Sammy Klaus Classic, also for the same uh, brewery, which is Eggenberg in Austria. Also 2008 release, I've had, I've had it fresh, but I'm waiting probably until autumn or something to review that one. Uh, the Brooklyn Black Chocolate Style, which I reviewed, 2009 edition. I'll probably hold on to it until um, December, so just to compare the two. Um, this is not really meant for aging the McEwen Scotch Ale, but just I've had it for a while. It's been like a year and a half, so I'll see if there's any difference at all. This one was a gift for my friends in Toronto that brought me this beer last spring. It's the Thomas Hardy's Ale from England, from Devon, and um, uh, it's an old ale, 2008 release. And again, I haven't had it, so but I'll. It's still good to age this one because it doesn't really it gets better with time, not worse. Uh, the Schneider Aventus uh, Seventeen is I'm not sure. The Weizen uh, Weizen Ice Park, 2008 as well. Really enjoy this beer, but I decided to age it for a bit. Probably a review. Probably do a brief review someday. And then this one, again, see half these beers I've tried, half the other half I haven't. The uh, Saint Ambroise. It's a special release, special reserve Russian Imperial Stout. Actually, uh, I, I was lucky to pick up two bottles, one for myself and one for Barry, so Barry's probably going to review that someday. Um, it just it was released a few months ago, so I won't really age it for that long. I'll probably wait for another month or two and then review it. It's bourbon with aged and it's 9.1% ABV. Should be good. So, yeah. Okay, guys, so now you've seen my. Uh little aging collection. Um, half of those beers were actually not planned to be aged at all. I just uh, kind of spontaneously uh, decided to age them because I just didn't have time to review all of them. Sometimes um, some of them I've already reviewed so I just had extras and so forth. Uh, but yeah, now I'm going to just briefly explain what's happening in my life. Um, in a week and a bit I'm going to uh, write my first exam for this um, winter semester. It's going to carry on until uh, pretty much the end of the month. i um, really kind of scared because I'm not doing too great in some courses and you know, I hope I'll do fine in the finals. Um, then I'll take the first half of summer session as well. So I'm, I'll go, I'm going to study in May and June, just taking two courses. going to be busy every, every evening pretty much, Monday through Thursday, so I'm still going to be studying. Um, and I'm right now in the process of making a demo, like, EP kind of thing for my musical endeavours, I guess. Um, I'm almost done recording and then I'm hoping to put up some, you know, DIY CDs and uh, even though, like, the quality is kind of good, I'm doing this at home, but I've got pretty good equipment anyway. Um, and then I'm hoping to sort of dedicate more time to music in May and June as well. Um, so I might not be able to film as many reviews. I'm not saying I'm definitely cutting down, probably reducing it by a little, but um, you can still expect a good amount of brief beer reviews, even though I might not be able to film as many full reviews as I usually do. But I'll probably do once a week, or maybe twice a week, I'll see. It doesn't really, um, nothing set in stone at this point, so it doesn't really uh, appear all that clear to me, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, that's about it for this vlog. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was remotely uh, interesting. And remember, this is a really good beer if you haven't tried it. Um, I, I enjoy this a lot. So yeah, stick to good beer and uh, bye. Thanks for watching.